everybody. Welcome to MinMax. I'm Jeff Marchiafava, and I'm here with Ben Hansen today. Hello, who's Jeff. usually the host. I know, but thank you for tackling it this time because you're the tabletop expert, and we're here to talk about a surprising tabletop release. That's right. We are talking about Stardew Valley, the board game. Yeah. Um, do you have the name of the co-designer, Jeff? Because it is Concerned Ape, Eric Baroni, who designed and did almost everything with Stardew Valley. He's the co-designer of this. Yeah, it was co-designed by Cole Medeiros. I guess like the first thing that we can really say is it's definitely not just a light cash-in type of game. Like they really went all out capturing pretty much everything that there is in Stardew Valley has been put into this game. It is wild. Like maybe it's just that connection with the developer, the fact that he's been working on it, you know, for years now. And it's like, hey, let's try and simulate basically all of Stardew Valley in a tabletop game sounds ambitious and it turns out that it's very complicated like they have on their official site here in the faq section he says i want to be really clear with everyone that this game was designed to have some depth and complexity there is a lot going on here i guess we should say first off like i only played this once in a two-player game so i would if you want to consider this more first impressions as opposed to like you know a Die Hard review after yes. dozens of plays or whatever. This this is more on the first impression spectrum. But yeah, it was definitely uh, more of a learn than I was expecting going into it in terms of parsing that rule book and kind of figuring out the flow of the game. Yes, there's a lot of pieces to set up because uh, they have art for like all of the items basically in Stardew Valley. So just laying this thing out will take a while. I think the packaging, like putting it back in, it can get a little bit messy. There's a lot of small pieces here, but at its core, it's a co-op game where you're working your way through the seasons and making decisions. You have like basically 10 objectives that you have to get. And that's, those are all based on all of the activities that you know from the game. And on each turn, you're kind of, you're going to a place in town, which will contain an activity that you are doing. And then you you do a couple of those together and then you'll, you'll kind of usher in some different events, but you really have to figure out how to complete each of those objectives by the end of one year, which basically takes you through the four seasons once, and then it's over. And I have mixed feelings just about the the scope like i yeah. appreciate that they tried to work everything into it but it was more complex than i was expecting and kind of it was more fiddly than i was expecting like my wife and i play a lot of complex heavier games heavier euro games and those don't bother as us as much as this one did like the the game that i kept on thinking of while playing this is a game called caverna where you're basically dwarves and you have a farm that you're raising crops and animals on and then you're also doing some kind of mining things and in that game you have it's a worker placement game where you have like 50 different actions that you can choose between but each of those actions is like super simple in terms of what you're doing you'll yeah. go to a space and you'll get a couple coins or you'll get a you know a vegetable or you can sell vegetables and so like you're you're looking over all these things but it's really easy to parse out what you're what you're going to be doing at those places and that keeps it moving at a really fast pace here you have like 13 different actions that you can do i think but each one kind of has its own little quirks and rules overhead that you have to learn how it's working it's like right. if you're going to go fishing it's like okay well for the first thing you need to know is that there's this fish track and the fish are kind of moving in and out of it and then each one has a symbol depending on which kind of you know if it's a lake fish versus an ocean fish right and then you're going to be rolling and there are symbols on it but not for the ones that you catch with bugs that you get from this other thing each activity that you can do has its own ecosystem and having to learn all those rules takes a while and i found that i was constantly having to go back to the rule book to kind of figure out like fringe cases of like well okay how does this work and and what was what did this symbol mean and how you know like how does this interact with this item card that i got like you're gonna have those kind of questions that take more thinking about as you're running the game than i was expecting from a stardew valley game yeah that said uh i think the art is really great i think just seeing so many of those characters again with like new art is really fun and the wild thing is i was playing with my girlfriend um, of course, blasting the Stardew Valley soundtrack because you're a maniac if you don't do that while playing this. 
Jeff, did you listen to the Stardew Valley soundtrack? No, I didn't. You are a maniac for not doing that. But the crazy thing is, uh, by the end of it, my girlfriend who had never played Stardew Valley, didn't even know what it is, like ended up really enjoying the tabletop game. She's like, I would absolutely play more of this. Like, I like just a nice, soft co-op experience of farming and working through the seasons. It feels pretty unique from that perspective. My wife and I got within one objective. We had one objective, but for like the first three quarters of the game, we we're like, there's no way in hell that we can possibly win this. I was surprised at how tense it was. It's one of the things where I, I feel like they certainly tried to get all of Stardew Valley into this board game, but it lost the tone of Stardew Valley for me for a, a little bit because you ultimately have like 16 turns in the game yeah. and you have these 10 objectives that you have to get. And so you are really pushed in terms of trying to get everything completed on time and having to go and do every little specific thing in order to get all the resources that you need to get those things done. And neither of those things, like I play Stardew Valley because I wanna just spend dozens of hours, you know, fishing or maybe I'll focus on crops or whatever, but I get to pick what I do. And like, there's technically an ending to the video game, but it's so far out that mm -hmm. like, you don't really have to worry about it. And so it's a very lighthearted experience. And this was surprisingly more tense and really pushing us in order to try and figure out how the hell we're going to get everything done like like there was a frantic feeling to it that i don't get from the game you know like each each day in the video game it's like there's more stuff i wanted to do but i just get to wake up in the the next morning and do it and here yeah. it's like time's ticking man there's like two more cards in the season deck and then we're done and there's no, you know, it's like hopeless. Yeah, Joja's taking over. We got to do our best to bring them down. Yeah. Those damn Jojas. <laughs> uh, the other, the other thing that I think like big board game fans are gonna want to know and should know is that like there is also a ton of randomness in the game. When we lost, the the fact that we got as close as we did, we didn't feel like we had super earned it. And the fact that we lost, we also didn't feel like we earned it because like there's dice rolls for a lot of things, yep. you know, like in terms of if you're going to catch the fish, if you're going to produce the, you know, like animal products that you're going to get. I mean, there's like a dozen decks of cards in this game, including the which objectives you get. And some objectives are just clearly harder than others. And so there's all these things that you can't really control that are going to affect whether you get through all those objectives in time. And both my wife and I were frustrated by that. She does. She actually... When we finished playing, she was like, I'm, I want to check out that video game because she thinks she might enjoy the video game, but yeah. she was she was not as hot on the board game. That's the problem with a lot of the adaptations from video games in a tabletop where it's like, oh man, the Age of Mythology tabletop game. But at a certain point, it's like, why am I not just playing Age of Mythology? Why am I playing mm -hmm. these versions? Even though like it's cool with Stardew Valley here, you can play it single player. So if you just yeah. want a tabletop version of Stardew Valley, you can play it by yourself. It's technically possible. Yeah. And, and I think that, you know, like one or two players is probably the way to the way to go because it does get much longer. I mean, it, it took my wife and I four hours to get through it, even though it's it says 45 minutes per player. Right. But the the one other criticism that I have of it is that the scaling I don't like like the scaling is a really kind of lazy and dull way to do it where you need resources to complete these objectives. But the way they scale it is basically like. Well, okay, if you needed, you know, three animal products for this one, it's three animal products per person. And so it's just going to be six if you're playing with two players, or it's going to be 12 if you're playing with four players. And the same thing, the way that you make, you know, making friends gives you hearts, which helps you turn over the objective cards mm -hmm. to even see what they are. But that just kind of scales up with the number of people that you have. And... Some things are clearly, there's a symbol that will clearly tell you like, this is a thing that scales and you have to do it, but some things just aren't. And so I was constantly having to go back into the rule book for that too of like, well, okay, is this five coins per person or is it is it just a flat five coins? Yeah. And and I, I feel like that kind of scaling, like it doesn't, it doesn't make you cooperate anymore or it doesn't make the cooperation any more interesting. It's either okay, we're both going to end up going to the same spot because we need twice as many resources of this, or I'm going to go to one spot and you're going to go to another and we're going to stay there twice as long and just harvest those resources as opposed to kind of making us coordinate a across the different, you know, activities. Right, right. 
So in conclusion, Jeff, um, where you stand on at least your first play of Stardew Valley? Yeah, I think it's an okay design. I, I think the randomness is going to affect anyone who might be interested in it. And I think it like that's going to continue being a problem. Even if you know what you're doing, like there's a massive item deck card that like gives you special abilities, but those are completely hit or miss depending on what you have to do or what your specialty is in the game and all those kind of things. So I think the luck is always going to be a problem. I think the the overall design is pretty solid and they have different ways that you can make it easier or harder, which is really nice. Um, but for me personally, it just like the tone was so different from what I wanted from Stardew Valley that it right. kind of turned me off. And it's it's probably not a game that I would continue going back to. Yeah, I'm curious if you've played it, you know, leave a comment below. I'm curious to hear what you think about it. But I'm kind of in the same camp of, I think I'd rather just play the game, especially now that they've embraced co-op in a big way in that game as it's gone on after its launch. Um, I don't know how often I'll be going back to this one, but I'm curious to hear other people's thoughts. Thanks so much for watching this video from MinMax. We're a Patreon about games. Friends are getting better. We'd always appreciate if you threw a sub our way. We have other tabletop playthroughs that we've done on the channel. Hopefully we'll be doing more tabletop coverage in the future. Uh, you can check out our interviews. The MinMax show is our flagship show. We have The Deepest Dive, which is our ongoing game club discussions that are the best, most thorough discussions about games on the internet including one that we just wrapped up on Batman Arkham Asylum, which is a very, very fun discussion. So if you like Stardew that Valley and board games, you'll love talking about Batman for five hours. Of course. Yeah. And I mean, all those things sound great, handsome, but is there any way that we can win prizes? Check out Trivia Tower. Every month we have a huge uh, trivia contest amongst the community to win game codes, to win an Astro A50 headset. And we have a special guest every time around. Uh, the last guest was Danny O'Dwyer from Noclip. Uh, so you can check that out on our YouTube channel. It's a very fun show. Thanks so much for watching, everybody. Bye. If you are sick of snark, clickbait, and an avalanche of movie news, you can help support independent games media by subscribing to MinMax's YouTube channel here or checking out the benefits over on Patreon. It's a nice, clean handshake. You support us, and we won't make dumb, condescending stuff for you. Your support helps us continue our mission of focusing on games, friends, and getting better. Patreon.com slash MinMax with two N's. We'd appreciate it.